listen to me when I sing for you this melody to a song I say what I have to say sometimes it's the only thing that helps me through the day so many things on my Somebody show up. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. Uh -huh.
God for everything thus far. Now it's my happy privilege to turn the service over to the hands of our pastor. Give her a great big amen as she comes. Amen. It's good to be here. Yes. yes, God is good, huh? I'm preaching a message tonight in referencing we got more motivational speakers in the pulpit than we have preachers. And that's a fact. When I listen to these preachers, I'm thinking, y'all know you're a bunch of junk. You, you cannot preach pe to people anything but what truth is. I got a message coming up possibly next Sunday that truth are falling in the street. It's gone down. Um, me and Mont both, I'll call Mont and Mont, you got to turn this on. You won't believe this stuff that's coming from preachers. You just wouldn't believe it. There's so many lies. And I pray for them, but I pray that God bring these leaders down because many people are going to die and go to hell. But you know what I found out after looking on the Internet? I found out there's a lot of preachers out there saying this stuff is a bunch of garbage. So I won't be the only one. There's a lot of people out there talking about it. One preacher came out, he said, these preachers here, they are literally taking tens of millions to hell with their message. The true message won't do that to you. But if you, if you, uh, if you don't get the truth, you'll never be free. And the devil has made an arrangement with these people, just talk about this and talk about that. So they become motivational speakers. I think you need the motivation of, uh, to motivate people toward God, yes. not toward all this stuff. Yes. Uh, get a business, do all this stuff. Hell, you know, these people are not going to get a business. All of them are not going to be rich. We're going to have the poor till we die. The scripture says the poor will always be with us. So when I'm looking at the scripture here, Paul said to the, to the Galatians, he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and, will pervert, and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. He goes on and says, we said therefore, as we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. For do, for do I now persuade men, or God, or do I seek to please men? For or if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of, of, of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, uh, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past. In the, in the measure, I, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. But he said, he said to them, I'm trying to get to you to understand what you're getting. There's going to be a lot of people come back talking about it. Uh, they're going to come through. Paul said a lot of them are going to come through the churches, and they're going to, they're going to deceive many. But you don't have to be deceived. You, if you study your Bible, you know what? If it ever was a time that the Bible needs to be studied by every person, it is now. It is now. Because more and more, you can't count on what you're hearing anymore. But I've been in this, in this way preaching the gospel for 40-some years, and believe me, I know what this Bible says. So when you get up there and say the word is saying this, and say, I'm saying, no, 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 that's not true. Uh, but I, it is a sad thing. See, there is a difference between motivation and preaching. Motivational speakers tend to be man-centered and people-pleasing. You will never get that from me. If anything, I'm probably going to make you mad, but you ain't going to get, you're not going to be happy with that. Because you got to know the truth. Listen, then he says a motivational speaker tends, preaching is more than, is, preaching is more than a motivational speech. We are called to go all the, all, all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not any other gospel. Paul said if they come preaching any other gospel, don't believe them. Know that what the Bible says about it, therefore you cannot be taken advantage of. Okay? 
So in Mark, he says to spread the gospel, God's teaching for all who believe will be saved. Not just to inspire people to do better or motivate them to feel better. Here are 14 different between motivational speakers and biblical preaching. Preaching is Christ-centered and God-honoring. Listen, motivational speaking requires charisma. That's so you're supposed to be you know, really the person that people are attracted to, and, you know, all this garbage. Listen, but real preaching is the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Motivational speakers cannot make it happen. The people that have the power of God in their life and know the word of God, you can make it work. Okay? Motivational speech, speaking in, uh, influence emotions in the direction of self. We're supposed to get rid of self. we got to get rid of self. Self is your biggest enemy. They're teaching you to love yourself. No, you got to love God. Put the self on the, on the altar. And say, I'm going with God because that's where it's going to happen and that's what's going to be real. He said, okay, so uh, put, uh, put, put up, uh, where am I at? <laughs> but you got to understand this. It influences your emotions. The gospel is more than just making you feel good. You got to have something that's real, something that's tangible, something you can hold on to, something that changes you as a person and make you who God wants you to be. Amen. Preaching is about the cross and the kingdom of God. Motivational speaking is about our works and our life. You're not going to heaven off your works. You're going to heaven because you live right, because you accepted him into your heart. That's how you get, that's where you're going, Okay. So it says, preaching proclaims the gospel message of Christ, death and resurrection for our salvation. So you're getting everything that's going to benefit you. Spiritually, you're going to grow. Spiritually, you're going to, your way of thinking is going to change. Everything's going to change. And so, but if I get, if a motivational speaker is speaking, he speaks for money anyway. They go places and, and have, have, have speaking uh, engagements and what have you, and they call them, they're going to come and motivate people in whatever, in whatever thing is going on in your life, okay? Then it says, preaching proclaims the gospel message of Christ, his death, his resurrection, and our salvation. Motivational speaking might tag on the sinner's prayers at the end of how to of how to kind of make you feel good about this. This is going to change you. This will show you how to get going. This will show you how to be successful. No. You know, you can live in this world 100 years. Everybody is not going to be successful. When you tell people all this stuff, they start expecting it, and they tell you that God said it, and when it never happens, you know who they talk about? They talk about God. He told me God was going to do this and God was going to do that. At the end of the day, it's not going to matter. God is telling us what to do. We don't have to believe any person but this Bible. If I don't teach this Bible, you shouldn't believe me. Real preaching produces a holy awe of God and a deep respect for his word. You're in awe. Look at this. As long as I've been reading and studying the word, I still find myself in awe. Look at what God does. Look how he moved here. Look how he made the difference over here. That's, that's good. It's a lasting thing. Motivational thing is not lasting. It's there for the, for the moment, and then it's gone. Okay? Motivational speaking tends to be light, fun, and humorous and entertaining. This ain't about entertaining. It's not about how much you can make people laugh. This is, let's get, let's get it together. Understand, this is not a laughing matter. Every time Joel Osteen come up to preach, you know what he says? I'd like to start this thing off with something funny. We're talking about hell here. Hell and heaven. No, we're not talking about uh, funny things to make you laugh or make you uh, uh, 
and, and joke with you, he tells a joke every time. I knew a man about this. He did such and such a thing. Done so and so and so and so. And just going, and then everybody cracks up. Now he's getting ready. To, he, now he's getting ready to motivate you into something, not the word. I couldn't possibly come to the pulpit with a joke. This thing is serious. We're talking about our life here. We're talking about whether we're going to spend heaven or hell in one of those places we're going there. That's what this is about. And if you miss it, you don't have another chance to make it up. That's what it's all about. So I like to just keep it light. We're not going to get on you about anything. We just, uh, you know, we, we're, all trying to, we're all trying to get to heaven, aren't we? Yeah, but you ain't going. It's not, it's not a, a humorous thing. They say people laugh at me sometimes when I preach, but let me tell you something. When I'm preaching, it may sound funny with how I, how I put it into place, but at the end of the day, it's truth. It's truth. The seventh one is showtime when the motivational speaker steps to the podium. It's flow time when the preacher steps forward. Time to flow. The word of God. He's not coming to the pulpit to try to make you feel uh, good and okay, you know, it's what... It's the time for a show now. We're going to have our show. No. You want to have a show? You can do that outside. Don't come in God's house doing that. I've seen uh, sometimes husband and wives sitting up in church, and, and they just can't get away from each other, and they're just hugging and kissing. I'm thinking, honey, leave it at home. We came here to worship. We came here to serve God. And them same people end up in a divorce. They just can't get away from each other. I'm thinking, honey, we're having church. So leave that for later. When you get home, you got plenty of time to do that. Let's not come to church and think we got to be lovey-dovey, all that stuff. No. They asked one time if my husband would come up to the platform with me because he never sat on the platform. He said, that ain't for me, Rose. I'm going to sit out here. I don't, don't want to be up there. So I think it was one Mother's Day or some celebration. And I said, honey, th th they're asking if you'll come up and sit on the platform. Rose, I told you, th that ain't my place. I don't want people staring at me and gawking at me. I'm standing in my seat. He had no desire to be up front. You know, people have a, have a desire, I want to be up front. I want everybody to see me. When I used to go on vacation and come back, they, the first time they did it, I stopped it. They just started. Standing up and clapping, I said, what are y'all doing? I said, don't do that for me. Clap for him. <laughs> Clap for him. <laughs> I'm not the one. I hate, I hate that kind of stuff. One time we went on vacation, came back, and was at the airport, and the whole church was there. <laughs> so I'm getting off the plane, and, and, uh, and, the, and, the, uh, and the student said, uh, is this some big uh, star coming in? I said, I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure not a star. So, but they were all there and they was grinning and Ken, I said, I was so shamed. I thought, why did y'all come out here? And everybody said, Sister Rose, Sister Rose. <laughs> Just don't like it. Very uncomfortable for me. It's not necessary. We can say, you know, I love you and all that. That's good. But it ain't necessary for all the, this stuff. I said to a lady one time, I don't like being out front. She, I don't like attention. She said, oh, honey, I love it. I said, Do you, and why? Because it's a puffing up of the, of the flesh, exalting themselves, liking to be exalted. I don't care for any of that stuff. Listen, it says, preaching freely discusses heaven and hell and the immortality of the soul. Emotional speakers, I mean, I mean uh, your motivational speaking, never address hell. That is so true. I listen to these preachers and listen to them. Hell is never mentioned. Some of the preachers that was out there said, they never mentioned sin. No matter what, never talk about sin. Never say if you commit sin and you don't get right with God, you'll go to hell. Nobody says that. 
And what they do is give the promises of God to everybody in the church, and everybody in the church is not saved, and everybody don't get the promises of God. It doesn't happen. So I sit there sometimes and look. I call my said, turn this on, man, take a look. And we talk back and forth. My, my write some letters I don't. And said, listen, we got to understand when God called us to the ministry, we are supposed to help you to prepare not to go to hell. We are here to tell you the gospel, and, and hopefully you will be convinced that you need to give your life to God and so that you don't, so you're not in that position that you can go to hell and not even know you were going. There's a lot of people don't don't even, there's, never really been to church, never really heard the gospel about what's after this life. You need to know that. That's important. If you realize that when this life is over, you're going to one of the other places. It's either hell or heaven. But they don't, talk, they don't even talk about heaven. And Jesus' name is never mentioned. How can you talk about salvation or God and never, never mention That I look at this and I'm disturbed by it. And I'm thinking, you better be careful what you're listening to. Some is good, some is not good. Some is bad, some is horrible. You want to be careful. I got to be careful that I do, I get the word and know where I'm going. If you was trying to go from here to Denver and somebody didn't tell you, well, there's a lot of, a lot of construction work going on down there, you might want to take another exit. That helps you. It saved you some time. So I don't, I don't, I thank you for the information. Because if you hadn't told me that, sometimes you'll, you'll see a sign saying it's an accident or, or something to, to show you maybe take another turn. And you can appreciate that. Motivational speakers never address hell and address hustle getting happy and reaching your goal. Your goal should be God. That's what your goal should be. I am going to live for him and I'm going to do everything I can in my power that I might fulfill what my purpose is. You know what they say about preaching? Real preaching is salt. Motivational speakers is sugar. When people listen to God's word, they want more of God. When people listen to more motivational speakers, they want more of the motivational speaker. But no, I gotta have more of God. That speaker's not worth a nickel unless he gives you something directly from the word. You gotta give it to you for that. If, if you want to be, you know, what use is it to go to church and you're not being told anything that you should be told? And at the end of the day, when you come to the end of your life, you don't know whether you're going to heaven or hell. Somebody got to tell you what the word says. How do you go to hell? In this book, it tells you. How do you get to heaven? In this book, it tells you. If you follow the instructions, you'll get there. If you go the wrong way, it shows you that's hell's over here. What is the way that leadeth to destruction? And many there be that finds it. So a lot of people is going down that road. That's why it's so big. That's why it's so enlarged. More people are going to hell than going to heaven. That's true. So you look at where, where people are going. Church is not church anymore. What you see now, it's not church. And I think it's sad. When I was raised up, I went to church. We know we was at church. We were there looking to worship God and, and to serve him. Even as teenagers, we were different in church. We for sure wanted to know that we was where God wanted us to be. And we're being taught from Sunday school on. You're being taught. I was singing a little song that we used to sing in, in uh, Sunday school. That's a long time ago. And it says, Jesus wants me for a Sunday to shine for him each day. And he goes on telling you what all he's wanting from you. And, and you stand there, little kid, I, I got to shine for Jesus, shine for Jesus. I remember that. 
We start being taught from that point on all the way up. So now I'm in a place that, okay, I understand from the time I leave the church as a young person, a, a child, that's why we should teach our kids. You should teach them. Those kids don't forget that stuff. They remember. A little girl was on there when so many people were dying from COVID, and she said, the thing that's nice for us is that we go to church on Sunday, and, and we're told that God is going to take care of us, so I'm not worried about COVID. God's going to take care of us. This is a little girl. Well, she was so, and, and was convincing. That's because she'd been taught that. What are you teaching your children? You got to teach your kids about heaven or hell. You got to teach them how about living right or sinning, one or the other. What God loves and what he don't love. It's amazing how much, how much kids can, can, can take in. I, I was on, on TikTok the other day. I go out there quite often to much to me on that stuff. And, uh, and, uh, and there's, <laughs> there's a, little, a little girl, maybe she's six years old. She got the Bible open, and she's preaching. Let me tell you something. <laughs> and I'm looking, I thought, wow, look at this. And she's just preaching up a storm. And then she's, after a while, she calls the Bible and says, let us, let us praise him. Let's praise him. And her audience is about two people behind her. <laughs> but she's, she's acting it out. My kids used to play church all the time. I mean, you go in there, and they're singing, and they're shouting, and, 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 can't, and then they try to speak in tongues. <laughs> But they were learning this. They were in a good atmosphere. The atmosphere and how you raise your children has a lot to do with where they're going in their lives. It really does. And I used to go in and listen to my kids, and somebody's praying for somebody, and they fall out on the floor. And, and, <laughs> but this was something they've seen. This is what they've been around. They don't know anything different. And then, then they, somebody would do something bad and say, uh, you done backslid. <laughs> and here's what they would say. I can backslide anytime I want to. I said, oh, no, you can't. But this is, this is what they pass on because this is what they heard. Because they didn't hear about you can backslide anytime you want to. That was their own assumption. But I'm telling you, we got to put it out there. Don't give people the wrong thing. If somebody comes to you and asks you something, don't tell them something that you don't know. It's okay if you don't know. Look in the Bible and tell them this is what the word says. Because nothing says that we know everything, God knows everything. But when you've been preaching as long as I've been preaching all these years, you know this Bible. So when I hear people talking about it, I'm thinking, that ain't God. In the Word it says this, that's not in the Word. But they do it all the time. And it's so sad. When you got to be in a church where you can learn something about God and you can grow and become really developed spiritually. Too many people, the church is full of Deformed people sitting on the pew, full of them, everywhere. And, and you wonder, what's that over there? Something crazy. Somebody told them something crazy and it made them look crazy. You don't want that. You know, you need to know what the church believes, what it stands for. You need to know something about that pastor. Is the pastor on the level? Are they really saved? Are they really living the life? Or they're just talking about it but not living it. That won't work. I never would stay up under a preacher that I didn't trust or I didn't have faith in. Amen. Because I look at your life. Your life depicts who you are. Yes. Whether or not you're walking in the word or not, or whether you're over here just putting up a front and getting as much money as you can get. And most of them, it's all about money. Yes. It's all about money. The whole time is spent saying, God want to make you rich. You're a liar. Everybody's not going to be rich. And God's not trying to make everybody rich. But that's what they tell them. And then when it don't happen, they blame God. Said He told me God. And then they pro prophesy over people. Prophesy over you and tell you, thus said the Lord. God said, tell you this, 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 this. And so on, so on, so on. So God ain't said one word. You know what I always understood, could understand? If God's talking to them, why don't he confirm it with you? You need confirmation. Did God say this or are you just saying it? One or the other. And oftentimes, that's why he told over, he just says that with Ezekiel and the prophets, he said, I didn't send these people. They haven't heard from me. 
He said, I never spoke to them. They're prophesied out the imagination of their own heart. I never sent them. You better know who God sent. Because if God didn't send them, you got a problem. You got a problem. And the hardest person to get straightened out is a person that's been messed up by somebody telling them something was in the Bible and it wasn't in there. They get messed up. They don't, they don't know hardly what to believe. Well, I think that's right. Well, that's what he said. Well, did you read your Bible? If you didn't read your Bible, don't believe it. Check it out. Everything I tell you from this pulpit should be scripture. Everything I tell you, if it ain't in here, it shouldn't be doing it. That's a fact. You know what? We got people going into ministry now for one thing, money. That one man, uh, Jamal Bryan, that's the stupidest so-called preacher. And he's up there to my, I, you know, I may not like you, you may not like me. Well, what kind of garbage are you talking about? Sometimes I'm in a mood. I don't want to be bothered with you. I would have got my thing up and went on out the door right then. Sometimes I don't want to talk to you. And if you don't like me, that's okay. I may not like you. This is the kind of stuff you're getting from the pulpit. Now, in the first church he had, he had an affair on his wife. He calls his daddy, who's a bishop, and says, find me a church. You know what he wanted a church for? He wanted some money. If you played over here, what's going to keep you from playing over there? And once you find out a preacher's playing and doing all that stuff, don't get under that preacher. Next thing you come, he's going to put you in the bed. You said, I'm not going to bed with anybody. He thinks he's going to do it. They're no good. We had a lady in our church. She's still here. She went to another church many years ago. I don't believe in sisters and brothers riding together in the same car. I don't believe that. Now, if your wife is in there and your husband's in there, that's okay. But do not get in the car with a brother or sister and you and just you and them. Never good. Never good. And he, she asked him, she wanted to go home. He said, well, I'll run you home. Should have never gotten that car. Man drove on down to where our street was, and when, when they got there, he said uh, he wanted to know if they could, he could come in, they could have a little fun together. I mean, it's supposed to be a preacher. And she said, no, well, nobody will know about it. God knows about it. And he ain't a preacher. If, uh, he want, wants to bed you down. He's everything but a preacher. He's not a preacher. But this goes on constant all the time. Believe me when I tell you. It is common practice that people sit on the church pew. They sit in the choir. They have affairs all the time in the church. Should never happen. And the pastor that's in the church should see to it that it doesn't happen. You got to take authority over that stuff and say, no, you can't do that here. We've, we've had some real lustful demons come in this church. They didn't stay long. We don't mind telling them, what, what, what you looking for, baby? <laughs> yeah, tell me what you're looking for. Well, I just wanted to see if I could talk to her. I said, no, you can't. Not in this church, you can't. Now, you may go out on the street, find you some trick out there, she'll talk to you. <laughs> but church ain't supposed to house tricks. We're supposed to house saved women. <laughs> Can you be trusted? You got to know that about your pastor. Can you be trusted? Are you really good? Are you really what you say you are? It's easy to say a bunch of words, but is that really true? I'm thankful all these years that I've been preaching the gospel. You couldn't put a, a black mark on me if you tried. Never will happen. Never. I love people. Every once in a while, we have what we call a, a love feast. We ain't had that in a long time, have we? We got to do that. Brothers hug brothers. Sisters hug sisters. You ain't going, to how you, how you doing, baby? No, no. No. <laughs> That's not happening. You just hug the sister. I was up here praying for people one time in the prayer line, and I saw this brother sitting on the pew. I thought, Already I had you, brother. I got you on, on the radar. 
So he gets in the line because he thought, I'll just go up there and get me a hug. I thought, oh, no, you're not. So I, I was praying for people. He got in the line. He got to me. He said, Sister Rose, I said, how you doing? <laughs> you ain't getting a hug here, baby. I don't give hugs. I give hugs to, our, to the ladies in our church. And some of our brothers, they can hug me, but I'm a pastor. And, and believe me, if they got a spirit, they ain't hugging me. Yeah, no, you're not getting nothing here. But he really thought he was slick. I just watched him sit back there, and then he finally made his, got in the line like, I'm going to give me a hug. No, you're not. You don't have to be a nothing. You don't have to give in to every dirty thing the devil's got out there. What about being right? What about being pure? What about... You stay with your husband and wife, and I stay with mine. Why do we have to lust after other people's mates? It shouldn't be in the church. See? Shouldn't be there. Anything that teaches us any, uh, anything that's contrary to the word of God or false doctrine, you must be aware of it. You can get poisoned by that stuff. And some people make it out. Some people don't make it out. What are you going to do with it? Pope Francis assures... Uh, atheists that they're going to heaven. I thought, oh, no, they're not. Well, they don't, they don't really have to believe in God to go to heaven. Yes, they do. And how are you going there when, when you are atheist? You don't believe there's a God. But God going to let you come up in heaven. No, that's not going to happen. He also says, and I quote him, saying, uh, uh, a believers would be forgiven by God if they follow their conscience. So just follow your conscience and you'll be okay. Your conscience will lie to you all day long. You know and I know. You can't, you can't depend on your conscience. Sometimes it'll make you do the right thing. Sometimes it'll make, you, it'll make you explain it away. Well, if I do it just one time, it's nothing to worry about. God will forgive you. Quit playing that game. It doesn't work. It catches up with you very soon, believe it or not. So I'm listening to him now. He's one of the, the leading so-called spiritual leaders in our country. But he's not a spiritual leader. He's a leader. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a pope. But that whole doctrine is false doctrine. They have their own Bible written up the way they want it. It shouldn't be that way. This Bible here, one. Tell it. Why did you have to change your Bible? So when you die... You're not going to hell. You're going to purgatory. And purgatory is a place that you stay because when you die, everybody dies with sin. Not true. Not true. And so since everybody dies with sin, so now we're telling you when you get over there, they're going to put you in this holding area, and you're going to get the, all the sin off of you, and then you're going to heaven. Not true. There is no purgatory. There's two places, heaven or hell. You're not going in anything, in, nothing in between. It's one or the other. So that, that's why it's so important that we get the truth and live our lives according to it. And it will tell you if you live your life according to the word of God, you're sure to get to heaven. Amen. You're sure to get there. He says, all people are children of God. It means that all people will ultimately be saved. No, it's not true. Who was that on there? This man, can't think of his name right now. He says, you don't have to worry about hell because it's almost impossible for you to go to hell. No, it's very possible for you to go. He says, you just, it's just not going to happen like that. I'm thinking, who are you? He got a big church. All these people think, they're not going to hell. No, you're not going to hell. Well, who told you? Get your Bible out and read it for yourself. Check it for yourself. He said, whosoever believeth in Jesus as God, son should not perish but have eternal life. So you got to believe in him. You can't say, I don't believe in God, but I'm going to heaven. That's not true. It's not true. I got a meeting I got to have with our members on Wednesday night that the Lord had me to take care of some things. They're not going to be very happy about that. But I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a preacher. 
I'm not here to motivate you, but one thing, get on your knees, talk to God, and get rid of the sin that's in your life. And I was thinking as the Lord was talking to me about it, I thought, God, this is so true. Open your eyes, take a look at this, Rose. Take a look, take a look. Yeah, so true. I would deal with it Wednesday night. Uh, no visitors are allowed, members only, as that pertains to this church. It don't pertain to you. So I got to take care of business. You know what I thought about this? I thought, boy, these people really love me. I rebuke them and reprove them and everything. They still say, I miss Sister Rose. (laughs) Just the truth. And I was thinking about that the other day. I thought, isn't that something? You just tell people the truth. And when they're wrong, you rebuke them. And when they're not right, you reprove them. And then they still say, I'm so glad you're back. I need reproving. I need rebuke. (laughs) Yeah. But you know what? That's because it's real. That's true. Everybody said this time I was gone, it was so long. I said it might have been long to you. It was short to me. I told Nisty, you know that three weeks is gone fast. Wow. We missed you. I said, really? Did you miss us? (laughs) I miss you a little bit. Especially the good people. Yeah. But I thought, God, the time is moving so fast. We need to be in touch with the time. The world's going to come to an end here shortly. I'm telling you, everything in Scripture points to it. We're going, we're at the end of time. Meaning, it's time to get right. Get yourself right with God. Because if you don't, you'll wish that you had. You can't make it right in the end. You got to make it right before then. Because in the end, it's not going to work. Too late. So he said, well, I think I have time. You don't know your time. Nobody knows their time. But we know we live in this world. Every man's going to die. Every person. Since we know that, should you not be making preparation? I think so. I would be. I made preparation 50 years ago, 55 years ago now. I'm staying with it. And no such thing, you can't stay with it. You can stay with it. You got to want to. I'm enjoying. If you're enjoying something, you don't want to be away from it. I enjoy being with God and in his presence. There's nothing better than that. It's a beautiful life. And when you get it, it's the best thing ever happened to you if you surrender to it. But if you're looking for for trying to find a way out, you're not going to enjoy this life. I love it. I don't think God got to change one thing for me. Everything is absolutely perfect. And can I do it? Yes, I can do it. <laughs> Same with you. I'm saying to you, you got to say, Lord, you know what? I'm going to tune into what you're saying. Tune out everything else that it doesn't matter. Just tune into what he's saying. That's, what, that's where it's going to work at. It's not going to work at any other place, so don't play church. You, I mean, why play church when you go going to hell in the end? Stay in the bed and eat chicken. So you're going nowhere. I'm not going to waste my time going to church, getting up early in the morning, getting a bath and getting ready, and then when I die, I go to hell. Just don't worry about it. No, I'm, I'm going to make it. I got to come. I got to get to church. I got to worship. I got to praise God. I got a lot of people that I got to talk to this week. It backed up so quick, I thought, God, help me. Help me, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I need to do it. When you look at people saying, can I talk to you for a minute? That's important. What they want to know is important that they know it to be able to make it. I looked at my two girls back here sitting by Ashley. I'm going to really get in touch with y'all because I'm going to keep y'all safe. I'm going to really get in touch with y'all. We're going to get together and talk, and y'all going to see how easy it is to be safe. I asked a little bit there. I said, where you been? She said, I'm backslid. <laughs> I said, no, don't backslide. Call me on the phone. If you feel like you're getting ready to backslide, call Sister Rose. I'll talk to you. 
I'll talk you out of it. You don't have to backslide. That's because she's alone. You gotta have you gotta have a good fellowship with friends and people that can talk to you and encourage you. And I looked at y'all tonight, I thought I'm getting them. Child, y'all be shouting all over that bench. Y'all won't miss church for nothing. It's the truth. I truly believe if you got the goods, you can pass it on to someone else. For sure. For sure. You know what? If something is real, everybody knows it. And when it's a lie, you know that too. This is real. You just, it, it ain't something phony, not heartly. It's, it's for you to have, for you to draw from, to get strength from it and become a better person. But you need help. I wish I was, I wish I had five of me, but I only have one. Ain't that right, Amos? Amos prays, prays for me to be in that old family laughing every night. Every night. He said, what is it tonight? I said, well, my leg, he said. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! The whole family's cracking up. He said, whoa, there it is. <laughs> he is the joke in the family. But a good joke, he's a nut. But people just stand around when everybody gets ready to leave, see what they was going to pray about tonight. But you know what? It's good, clean fun. You can have fun. Just not the kind of fun you did in the world. That don't work. But people act like serving God is a hard thing to do. I got to serve God. You know what? You can't do this. You can't do that. No, we can do a lot of things. But sin, we can't do. We got to quit the sinning business. You can't serve God in sin. They say, well, everybody sins. No, everybody don't. People that come to God and give your life to God, you don't have to sin. Them preachers is telling them people, that man told, told, told people uh, that, that Creflo Dollar, he's a huge liar. And he said, Jesus done paid everything for you. When you sin, don't worry about it. You are good. Just keep going. You know how many people are going to go to hell because he told them that? And they'll be sitting and thinking everything is okay. That's bad. That's bad business. But if you get somebody who's telling you the truth and show you how to serve God, I'm telling you it's the greatest life in the world. You couldn't find anything better than that. He's a God of truth. He said you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know why you don't know who you are? You've never been exposed to truth. Because most people tell, tell you, no, I'm not that kind of person. Oh, yeah, you're that and more. But because they don't know who they are, you got to get the truth to know who you are. And the preachers must tell you the truth, not come up with a motivational speaker to try to make you feel good. And it's all about what you can do in this world, nothing about what you're going to have to do to get out of here. People got to have that. Think about it. He wants to fix your life. He wants to change you. I was young when I got saved. So let the devil tell you, you're too young for this right now. You ain't too young to die. People die of all ages. So look at your life and say, you know what? I need to get it together. I told another lady this week, I said, if you get angry or upset about anything, I said, call me on the phone, day or night. I'll talk to you. Preachers basically is not going to be available to you every moment because they really don't care. But if you care, you can call me. I'm giving y'all my number tonight before you leave this church. You're going to call Sister Rose. Put your name down because I don't know what your name is. <laughs> so I know who's calling me. But uh, understand, people need more than just coming to church. They got to have support outside. So they're able to maintain that, and you can't get that through motivational speaking. You've got to have power. The person must have power to help you. If they ain't got no power, they can't help you. They need somebody to help them. Some of these preachers need to get saved and need somebody to help them. And they don't want that. They just steady all over the place. Preachers, preachers, preachers. And money, 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 money. And people cannot survive off of that. It's got to be more than money. Do you care about me as a person? Will God say, do you love me? Are you willing to help me? 
It's not about that. Any, any man that calls himself a minister or a woman that goes into the ministry uh, and they don't go in that they may benefit souls and win people to God, they're in it for the wrong reason. And you will never benefit from it. Never benefit. Listen. Learn the word for yourself. I cannot stress that enough. Read it. Study it. You don't know how to study Sister Rose to teach you? I wish there was more of me, but it ain't, it ain't more of me. But I'll do my best to help you, to get you there. I told uh, Henry this morning, I said, Henry, you ain't been to the desk to see how Sister Rose a long time. He said, I was going to come, but when I saw that line, I thought, I'm not going up there. <laughs> I ain't getting in that line. I understood, but I called him at the end, so he still got a chance to talk to me. He said, I love you, Sister Rose. Thank you for making me uh, feel welcome here. I said, well, how would you not feel welcome in the house of God? Because a lot of places you go to, you don't. You do not. You're just there. You're another face in the crowd. It's got to be more than that. This thing is work. It's work, but it works. You don't mind working if it works. But if it ain't working, I don't want to work. I don't want to do it. Let me tell you, you could not be in a better church than you are right now. That's true. And that's just saying Sister Rose saying that. That's truth. There's not a person here I would lay my life down for because there are souls. That's what we're, that's what we're commissioned for. That's why I want to know if Donald's okay. Check Donald see where he's at. See how, how he's doing. He says, Sister Rose, I miss you so bad. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the truth. David come, I mean, uh, is it David? Yeah, come to the desk and he, happy to see me. I tell you the truth. I talk about you. <laughs> but I love you, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I love you. <laughs> That's why people can take it. I can take correction. I can take you telling me that I better stop that. I can take that. Why? Because you show love with it. Love is the key. Love is the key. I love my kids, and when they got wrong, I beat the crap out of them. <laughs> that didn't mean I didn't love them. I loved them. But love says, if you do wrong, I'm going to chastise you. That's what God said. God said, those I love, I chastise. Right. So you'll feel that. But it's not because we don't love you. Listen tonight. I'm leaving a little bit of this here, and I'm not going to go all the way through it. It's too much. But I'm telling you this. You can, for sure, turn into the person that you want to be and that God wants you to be. Come to church. You know what he do to people? Well, you've been Sunday morning. You don't want to go back Sunday night. If you come back, you're going to get something. He don't want you to get it. Come on Sunday morning and Sunday night. The rest of the week is yours. So you know, I'm going to make that. If, if every person sitting on this pew tonight would make up in their mind, Sunday is going to be God's day for me. I'm not going to plan anything. I'm going to church. Sunday morning, Sunday night. I dare you to do it. In a few weeks, you'll see your life change completely. You'll think, boy, I'm thinking different. I feel different. Yeah, for sure. But that's a good thing. But you can't get people to do it because the devil talks them out on Sunday night. You already been to church. You gave the Lord what you... You let him know you, you appreciate him. No, do you love him? There's not a person in this room, if you love somebody, that you, you want to be with that person, if you love them. And I ain't talking about hoeing around with some man somewhere. I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> no. I'm talking about real love, not something for the moment. That ain't going to work. Follow what I tell you. Good advice. How did I make it? I listened to good advice. And that's why I'm still here today. You could be here. You say, I never thought I could be like Sister Rose. Yes, you can. Say, well, you know, I'm a lot younger than her. That ain't got nothing to do with it, baby. There's some old whores out there. <laughs> that ain't got nothing to do with it. You can, be, you, can, you can do what you need to do. It ain't got nothing to do with age. 
You got some old chicks out there doing all kind of crap. I went to Vegas one year, and boy, here come this old woman out of out of the out of the hotel. She got a a, a plunging neckline way down here. The boobs have wrinkled with time. Why would you Why would you leave that out? There's nothing sexy about an old boob. She got the truth. Yes. And then she had on a short skirt. Legs is wrinkled. How did just sell Lynn? How old are you? Just be your age. You don't have to go like that. And nothing is worse than to see an old person trying to be young. And the same way with an old man. He's got a pot belly. He's got two handles on the side. He got, he, he's old and decrepit. He's still trying to act like a cat daddy. No, you're not. No. Enjoy your time in life. Enjoy. Why do we want to reach back to all that stuff? Enjoy today. I enjoy today. You know, at 77 years old, what, what, what would I look like coming up in the church with a mini, some, some hot boots on, and all that stuff? Never happen. That's sickening. Wake up and realize, just be your age, baby. Have a good life. Live it when you're young, and enjoy it when you're old. It's okay. You ain't got to do a bunch of stuff to try to make yourself look a certain way. You know, fix up. I think you should fix up. I do. But at the same time, let me not feel like I need to go out here and, and make this scene. People know you old. <laughs> There's no mistaking it. It's obvious. It's the truth. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad the man he didn't let teardrops fall. You know what? I know he'd find joy. Find joy. In every tear that I shed. Oh, seeing I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad the man didn't make heartache. Cause I know he'd give me more. He'd give me more than I could bear. Oh, seeing I'm glad. The man, he just, he didn't create me. No oh, love for one day. Man, he surely forsake me. Oh, and I'm glad, yes, I'm glad. Oh, I'm glad, glad, glad. I'm glad that God, he made. See you.